Well, good morning and welcome. It was a very beautiful weekend. So naturally, we are setting out to have a very, very awesome and even more beautiful week. And when we say this, it doesn't mean that the odds are always in our favor, but even though they actually are. Uh, but it means that, come what may, we intend to have a positive outlook towards everything that happens. Yes, indeed. Come what may, even when aliens invade Earth and are probing everybody, they ask us, the yeah. crew here on Wake Up Nigeria, <laughs> to probe them instead. That's how awesome we are. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me with what. Uh, I won't. <laughs> but all the same, top of the morning to you. We're back, fully restored, ready to take what? on the brand new week. And of course, we're counting down to the end of this incredibly eventful year, I have to say. 331 yeah. days gone already. Ooh. We've got, what, 34 left? Don't ask me how I keep count. Oh, I won't. I just do. <laughs> In any case, inside yeah. of the kitchen is one very, very beautiful alien prober. Huh. Of course, who else? And Winfred. Winfred, what would you be probing aliens with, I wonder? <laughs> so speechless. <laughs> Good morning, viewers. <laughs> it's always a pleasure being here, serving you Everything oh nice right here on Wake Up Nigeria. It's a beautiful week, as uh, Mazino and Titi said earlier, and uh, we're about to have a great show. I'm glad to be here. My name is Winfrey Agbeleche. Do stick around. We have lots for you. Yeah, well, we of do. course. Now that you've gone and told them their names, we have to do ours. Go yeah, ahead. my name is Titi Lyra And of course, my name is Mazino Appeal. Now, you want to stay tuned, stream the show live at tvcentertainment.tv and also on Facebook at TVC Connect. Follow yeah. us on all our social media platforms. You'll find us at TVC Connect all over these. And yeah. use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Now, that Monday morning motivation is essential. And uh, it's going to be something you are going to enjoy. We're going to be discussing balancing life roles by promoting self-awareness. Hmm, a deep one. Chile Udemga is going to be here with us. Certified project management professional and social impact activist. And then, of course, we'll be having a performance. Wilder Boy is going to be here for us. And uh, we can't see, or rather we can't wait to see what he's going to be doing. And then, of course, Olumide Bambelu is a real estate developer and the founder of Bookstone Properties Limited. Now, his foray into real estate as a realtor kicked off not too long ago, and he started the venture as a way to provide solution to the current housing deficit in the country. He joins us in SME to tell us more about this journey. Okay. Welcome. It's mm. another Monday. Mm. And yeah, I know Mondays are always very hectic, especially for me, but uh, I'm very excited about this one. Absolutely. Honestly, the ginger that Mazuno has been you know. Know, dishing out this morning, I don't know. His know. sock game on point. Thank you. His jacket is buttoning <laughs> oh, up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it must have something to do with a credit alert or something. Oh, no, no, no. I brought... Yeah, okay. My, my so, excitement doesn't come from... The, the thing I, is... Money sure? passe. Mm, like okay. Mm -hmm. Thank per you very se. much. You know me well. I've, okay. I've rounded up my year already. Oh, okay. It's November and December. I think I'm just going to... It's just, it's just cruising it's in between 2022 and 2023. Yeah, exactly. So this is like... Uh, <laughs> I think I'll call it... December is my limbo month to just experience stuff and not really contribute. Not here on Wake Up Nigeria. <laughs> I will be contributing, away, but I'm just going to enjoy it. I think it's, it's for me. He's not his own life. Everybody so should. you're not going to be uh, globe trotting like you usually do. Like if you guys give me time off, but what? you guys aren't going to give me that time off. I do plan a big one for January. However, okay, okay. I might be absent all of January because I, I, I would like to do a lot before the elections. I'd like to see plenty of Nigeria before oh, the elections. So okay, I, I'm hoping okay. that I can get Are you sure it's a safe time to travel, though? Mm. Um, it's the safest, if you ask me. Oh, okay. I think it Not is. January now, a month before the election. <laughs> January, for me, would be it. <laughs> before everything goes to... Nah, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm checking. Hey. I'm checking. Hey. <laughs> so, uh, on the contrary, I feel like it's going to be extremely peaceful, uneventful. That's what I believe. I believe it's going to be very yeah. calm and cool. And I'm speaking it into the atmosphere yes. deliberately, deliberately. Um, but the thing is, I, I feel like having a, a mindset of preparedness is also a key. Mm -hmm. So for those who are planning to travel this holiday, this is where all the travel advisory yeah. comes out. Please take care on the roads. And honestly, if you can afford flights. <laughs> If you can. <laughs> if you can afford Tell you guys what, it's going to be a humdinger of a show. Do stay tuned. And you're welcome. But of course, this is the news for Wake Up Niger. My name is Mizuno Peel. Now let's start. It's 89 days to the 2023 elections. We begin with the sad development as hoodlums set on fire INEC office in uh, Izi 
in Nizi local government area of Ebony State, leaving several permanent uh, voters' cards and other items burnt. Now, in a statement released, INEX National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voters Education Committee, Festus Okoye, said the incident occurred around 10 a.m. when some unidentified person set the entire building ablaze. The statement confirms that no casualties resulted from the attack, but the main building and all the movable and immovable items inside there were destroyed. Items destroyed include 340 ballot boxes, 130 voting cubicles, 14 electric power generators, large water storage tanks, assorted office furniture, and fixtures, and yet to be determined quantity of PVCs. Police authorities have arrested two offenders in possession of 468 permanent voters' cards. National Commissioner, Independent National Electoral Commission, Festus Okoye, disclosed this in a statement. Mr. Okoye noted that the first offender, Nasiru Idris, was found with 101 PVCs in Sokoto State, adding that a magistrate court in Sokoto has sentenced the suspect to one year in prison. The other offender, whose identity was not revealed, was arrested by the police in Kano State with 367 PVCs. He has been charged to court, and the commission is currently pursuing his prosecution. According to the INEC National Commissioner, the offense is in contravention of sections 117 and 145 of the Electoral Act 2022. Mr. Okoye says INEC will continue to pursue all violators of the Electoral Act and ensure their diligent prosecution. Now, outside Nigeria, thousands have turned out in Shanghai to protest and against uh, strict COVID measures with people publicly venting their anger at the government. During the protests in Shanghai, the country's biggest city and a global financial hub, people were reportedly heard shouting slogans such as Xi Jinping, step down, and Communist Party, step down. The latest unrest follows a protest in a remote part of the country where lockdown rules were blamed after 10 people died in a tower block fire. While Chinese authorities deny that COVID uh, restrictions caused the deaths, officials in Urumqi issued an apology late on Friday and pledged to restore order by phasing out restrictions. And that's all for the news here this morning. Do hang on to your seats for a fantastic ride here on Wake Up Niger for a Monday. Hello and good morning. My name is Titalaya Oyinsha. Time for us to take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the dailies this morning. You're watching Wake Up Nigeria. Now we're starting with the punch days. Monday, November 28th, 2022. Fuel scarcity. An MPC petrol price without subsidy is 400 naira per litre, according to Marketers. Page 2 has more on this. Says here, oil firms struggling with subsidies. Government cannot be Father Christmas, according to IP Man. NMPC, NMDPRA, keep mum. Over 30,000 filling stations face shortage. Beside the masthead there, says POS fraud, or rather fraud. How slack guidelines, banks, apathy, cost Nigerians huge losses. Right at the top there, Punch wins newspaper of the year. Eight others at NMMA. It says uh, here in the photo story, Adeleke reverses Oyetola's appointments, says action malicious. And uh, right at the bottom, it says election results, nationwide e-transmission possible, say telcos. Saudi-bound trafficker conceals cocaine in sandals. Yuletide and CDC warns of possible COVID-19 infection rise. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. We have with us the Nation newspaper as well. It says here, 2023, another attack on INEC offices raises concern over polls. IG orders CPs to take action. Commission seeks probe into attacks on facilities. Right above the masthead there on the left, it says, Adeleke, I will strengthen security, boost workers' welfare. Page four has more. Tinumbu, most experienced candidate, says Ayade. Page three has more. Azura targets 3,500 megawatts power generation. Morocco's win over Belgium thrills Okocha. And uh, just beneath the masthead there, it says NRC to enforce no NIN, no ticket on Abuja Kaduna. Uh, troops kill four bandits and federal government bans export of raw gold. Six plants underway in Ibadan, Kano, other cities. And that's what we have on the cover of The Nation.
We also have with us the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, it says here, anti-money laundering, SMEs decry registration hurdles, account opening process frustrating, say business owners, banks reject applications, and uh, SCUML procedure not cumbersome, says EFCC. Daily Trust's Hamza Idris wins NMMA Award, uh, Editor of the Year Award. Uh, I N I N E C rather, uh, Ebony office raised 340 ballot boxes and others destroyed. Change of baton name uh, as Adeleke uh, takes charge of Oshun. It also says here, finance ministry denies budget padding. Importers kick as cost of containers from China rises by 2.6 million naira. And uh, Kaduna Abuja train, federal government shifts resumption, malls fare hike. That's what we have on the cover of the Daily Trust. And that's all we have time for when it comes to the headlines and dailies at this point. All right. So, hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Mike. Hmm. So, um, I feel like all of us just got back um, <laughs> from... I, I, J, J. From, from, I from, from, I from, rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because we were all at Charlton Towers, yeah. a Yorkshire stately home. Mm -hmm. Wow, I totally blacked was, out on that one. Which was the <laughs> wedding venue for Mr. and Mrs. Anosike, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, talking about Rita Dominic and... Mm -hmm. Former uh, Rita Dominic. Uh, well, Rita Dominic is the Anosike. stage name. She's not <laughs> Anosike, Dominic right? Will always be Rita Dominic. I guess so. I'm yeah. telling you. But it felt like we all attended. Yes. Did she already get married earlier on in the year? It I'd was the traditional wedding in April. Oh. Yes. That, that was what that was. <laughs> That's what that was. Oh. Well, congratulations to her second yeah. time again for 2022. Because, um, yeah, but she didn't... How old is she now? Um, well, to the best of my knowledge, it, all indications is that she's 47 now. Yes. Right? Wow. Yeah, so uh, different... Um, there have been different comments yeah. and responses um, to this on the internet from how she's not meant to use divorcees as her uh -oh. bridesmaids mm. oh, wow. to the fact that she's 47 and this is her first marriage. Mm. So I've seen several posts on this and mm. people commenting about how um, people rush to get married. I mean, look at her. Mm. She's literally 47. It's her first marriage. Mm. People actually don't even believe that. Yeah. Mm. So I actually wanted to ask this question, right? What did you guys think about this? Mm. And uh, against the backdrop of societal pressures, and uh, the bracket of like, I think it's 25 to 35, mm -hmm. within which um, we're known in this climb to rush into marriage, even mm -hmm. if yeah. marriage is not calling you. Yeah. Or get worried if you pass this age and just forget about it. I know what Mike is going to say. He's about to say, whose business is it? I mean, I mean people like it, but now that I've taken that out of the way, Mike, what else? Wow. <laughs> really? But, you know, really? I think that was just a little mean. Uh, if just you a want little. to marry, marry now. <laughs> in other words. In other words. Hey, that's that's what I said. How is, how is it? Uh, I don't know. But I don't know. I, 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 I think we've gone to the point where the societal pressure. I talk, if, the, if societal pressure was as strong as it used to be, you would not be hearing some things that some gen are doing. It's not as strong mm -hmm. as it is. As you think it is. As you think it is. Yes, yeah. now, because. Not anymore. I was just listening to. Well, it never was. Because look, with the way uh, things are happening. I, I, I was listening to one, um, I think it was a podcast, and there was a young girl, and I was asking her, how old are you? You're 22 or something. Mm -hmm. She said, no. And she said, like, okay, because I'm 22, you think I'm dumb or something? She said, no, why are you not 60? Mm. Okay. Why are you not 60? Mm -hmm. So you mean you can reassign your gender, but mm -hmm. you cannot reassign your age? Mm -hmm. So my point is, many people have gone to the point where, by, I mean, they just do stuff they want to do. People are reassigning genders, and they, they choose to identify how they want to identify irrespective of what people think. Mm -hmm. So why Times this one? Times have mm -hmm. definitely changed. Changed a lot, well, yeah. I, well, I have to say that she looked extremely beautiful, glowing. Uh, both of them look extremely happy. And I just feel like, till now, I've always felt like this, that age is just a number. Mm -hmm. um, if, for instance, she had, you know, pushed herself into some relationship that, you know, because of age and all that, just to, in, in quote, settle down, she probably wouldn't have been able to find the love of her mm -hmm. life, which obviously she's now had like her dream wedding. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's, it's about the journey, really. It's mm -hmm. not about how fast you get there. I think it's great for her. I mean, mm -hmm. fantastic that she waited that long. I, I actually think that our generation, I belong to her generation, got married a bit too fast. Yeah. You know, we never, you know, took time out to understand ourselves, let alone the persons exactly. that we're actually getting married exactly. to. Yeah. It's nobody's business taking yeah. on Mike's 
uh, yeah. what's it called now? Yeah. When you choose to get married, yeah. slow down, enjoy your baby girl life first of all. Yeah. And why baby girl? I, I no, that's baby boy. Do, baby boy. I, do, I do, have a boy life to do. I want to push in before I finish. Yeah. Um, the fact that um, now look what Mike's gonna done. I've lost it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. What I wanted to say was this. Yeah, I think about it. If I'm friends with you or mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and I think about it, what advantage will getting married to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have exactly that yeah. cannot have if we are not married. Forget okay. logo. You find about yes, of you course. Need my point, yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. My point is that you can have some friends who mm -hmm. are who are maybe business wise they mm -hmm. are beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. It's a symbiotic relationship that's that right. it can go well yeah. without marriage. Exactly. So why if there there has to be something that will make marriage have an extra advantage? Yeah. That's when you jump into it. Okay. I think so, this actually brings me to another person I actually saw on social media, which actually asks this question, would you rather be married for life or have great friendships for life? Mm. Do you understand? I think the society we are, we don't necessarily pride friendships yeah. so much because I feel any connection we feel with the next person we believe is should You're lucky if you have be both, marriage physical. and yeah, friendship. Exactly. Yeah. So I, feel I think you should strive for that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Marriage that should be the goal. And I, feel like I think friendship first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before it will marry. Because, I mean, because at the point. You can do do and meet one Judas now. They'll cut your hair while you're still here. <laughs> and you'll first. learn now, but then again. You'll, you'll, some people, they don't learn. They don't yeah. But that's the thing. It's better. Yeah. Honestly, um, uh, it, it's, it's a great thing when people find love. Uh, um, and it's even better when you find friendship inside of love. Inside of it, and first of all. Yeah. But I think I must put this out there, right? It doesn't necessarily. Marrying late doesn't guarantee you marry rights. Oh. Oh, Wait, oh, it was going oh, okay oh, until you true. said that. <laughs> well, it's true now. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but we got to go. Drop the mic there. there. On that wow. bombshell. Since, <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> yes, indeed. Being beautiful is a very important part of what we try to do every day. We need a little bit of motivation to make sure that we can get there. Motivation is all we need, and uh, we're going to be trying to balance life roles this morning. We're here to try and promote self-awareness, prioritization, and self-care. That conversation is happening now. We have Chile Udimga. Uh, now, she is a certified project management professional and social impact activist, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Titi. Thank Thanks you Thanks so much for, for joining us today. Um, prioritizing ourselves being more self-aware especially as women uh, is something that not a lot of women want to have a conversation about yes. right? why do you think that is well obviously because um, we are focused on family we're very family oriented women are used to sacrificing everything that they want and they want to achieve for their family they're mm -hmm. so they love their family they love their children and so you find that um, Generally, it appears as though everyone else is on us. We're living for everyone else but yeah. ourselves. Okay. So it's important for us to be intentional yeah. about taking care of ourselves, about um, knowing who we are, about knowing what we love, about knowing what we want to achieve. And I find that even within my personal life and um, with conversations with thousands of women that I've had um, encounters with, that often um, we're the last people to be considered when you want to think about going on vacation, when you want to think about you know, having a nice time, every other thing comes first. And it's important that we seek time and find time for ourselves, be intentional about having fun, being little girls again, you know, mm. just playing. Is, is there really anyone to blame for this uh, turn of events? Does it, does it, can we blame it on culture, society, or maybe just our upbringing? What do you think it is? Um, I think it's multidimensional, okay. but mostly cultural. And that's because, you know, even from the time you're being raised as a young girl, you're told to aspire to be married. Okay. You're told, oh, when you have your own children, is this how you raise your children? Is this how you keep your home? So oftentimes we are raised culturally by the society, even by our own parents, that, you know, the only thing you ought to consider as your greatest achievement in life should be marriage. And that is not to say that I'm against marriage. I've been married 17 years. So it's not as though we're saying do not aspire to be. But you see, I also have dreams. I also probably would have loved to be an actress. Mm. I also would have loved to travel the world. Mm. And um, I don't think marriage or children should stop you from doing that. Okay. At the same time, I don't think you should hold off on getting married or having children because you want to achieve your dreams. I believe that if you're intentional about it, you can achieve all. 
you really can't have it all. You just need to learn how to balance it. You, learn, you need to learn how to ask for help. And you need to be vocal. I think um, women are not very vocal about their own personal needs. Now, the, the challenges uh, in many cases we've heard of, women are vocal, but vocal about calling out other women. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, you see another woman having a nice time going out, deciding not to go home early, for instance. Maybe deciding to go uh, watch a movie or maybe even go to a bar, have yeah. a drink yeah. by herself. Yeah. You have other women asking her, okay, don't you have children waiting for you at home? Don't yes. you ha what's, what's all this? Which kind of... So, I feel like we do have some kind of blame Yes. Uh, in this particular situation. Yes. Talk to us about that. Yes, um, you're very correct. And that's why we're having these conversations. And that's why I set up an initiative called Woman and Half yeah. by Chile. And it's Woman and Half because there's so much to us. There's mm -hmm. so much to a typical woman. You have family, you have maybe your parents, you have your children, you have your career, you want to advance, you know. There's just so many things to us. And that's why you're not just a woman. Mm -hmm. You're a woman and half. And so um, the reason we're having these conversations and having events, because we have events where we have and talk about these things, we have conferences, we have speakers, but more importantly, we come together to play, mm. just to network, just to let just our to head fun. down, just to have fun for no reason, mm. you know, and, and that's because a lot of people are going through a lot of stress. Yes, you're right. When it comes to um, a man being able to walk into a bar, yeah. no one raises an eyebrow, but yeah. if a woman does that, don't you have your home? Mm. You know, it's so, of course, that's why we're having these conversations. And people say that women are their worst enemies, mm. right? But personally, the best people in my life are women. Okay. So I think it's all about finding the right people in your life. Okay. There are people, there are bad men and bad women everywhere. And there are good men and good women everywhere. You just need to be quality to attract quality to mm. yourself. And of course, the naysayers will always say what they want to say. Okay. As long as you know that the people that are on your corner are supporting you yeah. and they know that you're not out there making a, a mess of yourself, of why course. not? You can yeah. have fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the main topic, the term self-awareness. Yes. And let's see if we can give it a, some kind of definition. As people are going out into this week right now, yes. what can they do to make themselves more self-aware? Yes, so for you to consider yourself aware, mm. you must understand that your life is not lived by the rules that other people have made for you. Mm. You have to understand that the society will always have its standards. Um, life will always have its standards. Everyone considers something, or they consider that there are certain things that should be the norm. But I always ask people, who wrote the rules? Mm. You are to write the rules of your life, and you cannot write your rules if you don't know yourself, if you don't know what you like, if you don't know what you want to become, mm. right? And the truth is, for you to achieve anything, you must go against the tide. Okay. You must be different, you must be confident, in the choices that you are making for yourself. As long as those choices are not harmful to anyone, as long as those choices are in the best interest of yourself, and of course you must take um, society into consideration. So you're not going to say, oh, because I want to do A, A B, C, yeah. you know, I'm going to go against culture. Okay. I'm going to go against um, societal norms. But at the same time, it's important that you love yourself. Uh, but oh, it feels like we're talking out of both sides of our mouth yeah. a little. Okay, so let me, let me give you a perspective. Yes. You have a scale here. Yes. You have a, a wife with two children, loving husband, who gets home on time, uh, goes through three hours of traffic, still cooks a meal, would love to go out with her friends, but decides, you know what, she's not going. Then you have a career woman yes. who is on a 9 to 5, or let's say 9 to 7 p.m. job, uh, isn't really concerned about, you know, getting married, really. Yes. She's focused on her career goals, goes out, hangs out with friends, and mm -hmm. she still feels good. At the end of the day, both of them are smiling. Yes. Is someone of these, one of these, more self-aware than the other? No, not at all. Okay. So, you, the first scenario you gave is my life. Okay. I'm married, I have two children, I have okay. a job, I run a charity, and I run um, the Woman and Half Initiative as okay. well. So, for, from just by saying that, amongst yes. other things, you can see that my hands are full. Okay. So, so the thing is, I try as much as possible to have these conversations because I'm happy. I'm happy with my life. Okay. But there are times when I want to do what that career woman is doing. Okay. I want to be able to go out without wondering, oh, who is going to make dinner? How am I going to? Yes. I don't know if you understand. Which is the typical um, life of the 
Nigerian, average Nigerian yeah. married woman, yeah, you know, sure. your, your, your life, your home, your um, children, yeah. all of that is important to you. You need to do homework and all. Mm -hmm. But there are days when you just feel like, oh, yeah. please, can yeah. someone give me a break? Okay. <laughs> do you understand? Mm. And so, like you said, none of, none of them is having a bad life. Okay. So it's not as though you're trying to, to sacrifice your home yeah. for for Career. having fun mm -hmm. and advancing in your career mm -hmm. and going out to have drinks. No, all I'm saying is on those days when I want to be able to go and have fun with my friends, mm -hmm. I want to be able to, first of all, recognize that this is what I want. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong. It's not culturally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And I need to be able to have that conversation with my husband. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to plan ahead mm -hmm. because I know that in my life circumstance, I can't just pick up and go. I need to make sure that, you know, the kids are, yes. So if I need help, I can ask for help. Mm -hmm. I can get someone to cook if need be. I can ask my husband, oh, please, I'll be going out tomorrow. Is it okay for me to get takeout? Mm -hmm. You know, those things are things that we as women need to know that they are yeah. okay to yeah. do yeah. once in a while, yeah. you know. And, I mean, it's very <laughs> important to have a supportive partner as well. So if you so have these that, kinds of conversations are interesting ones that we definitely can't finish right here on the couch. All, but all. I believe you said you have an event coming up very soon. Yes. I can't wait to see what that's about. And yes. uh, if you're following her on social media by now, then you'll know exactly what she's talking about as well. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, Chile. Thank you so much for you're having coming me. to join us today. Thank mm. you. All right, hopefully we've given you something to chew on for the rest of the week. And uh, speaking of things to chew on, uh, we're going to be heading into the kitchen at this point. Stay with us. Thank you so much. I mean, very, very important conversation. It's very important to balance out your life, whether you're working or you're a home mom. Make sure you get that balance in check, even as men as well. So here, creating balance in this kitchen here with me is Chef C. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank always. You. And you yeah. know, here on The Breakfast Show, we like to give you fresh recipes every single day to make sure that you're well fed, right? So today, Chef C will be telling me what we're putting together today. Yeah, we're trying to um, put a pepper soup together. That's Nigerian pepper soup, but oh. it's very different. Mm -hmm. This is not like a regular pepper regular soup. Regular pepper soup. This is like an anti malaria pepper soup. And, uh, hey, <laughs> it's very kind of an instant because of yeah. the spices that okay. already we have. We have, well. yeah. So, anti malaria. So, something I love about Nigerian African food is the fact that they are very medicinal. Yeah. Right? So, once we actually put a few ingredients into whatever we're making, you have great uh, um, 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 recipe for parasites. Probably malaria, as mm -hmm. you said, maybe for yeah. the cold as well, yeah. and all of that. And this season, since it's dry season, is very necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now on the screen, we have the ingredients we need for this instant anti-malaria pepper soup. Yeah. The ingredients start with onions, some dry, dry fish. fish, we have crayfish, we have goat meat, we have seasoning cubes, scent leaf, fresh peppers on ripe plantain, uh, H9C mix, local, local spices. spices. So now tell me, so what is the anti-malaria yeah, uh, well, we well, I'm trying to like uh, put put every um, the local spices we usually add mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. you know, trying to practicalize it in the <coughs> in pepper soup instead yes. of taking drugs. Mm -hmm. So most of these spices are like the edible spices we see on the, in the market on mm -hmm. our deliveries. Sometimes you see it in your backyard. Mm, true. So you don't even need to like uh, when you are sick or something, mm -hmm. you can apply most of all these local spices yes. into your. Yes. Um, um, meal and yes. it's an instant uh, relief. Instant relief. Mm -hmm. So now you're speaking specifically um, about the pepper soup spice. Yeah. So now what is, what does it make? What does it consist of? Yeah. I know, is it I, 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 yes, it's glove there. Then you see a frio. There are there are different um, names about okay. it. Okay. You know they are basically in the um, 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 tribal. Tribal names so for it, maybe okay. Just but what do you follow call me this? on that? Okay. And, uh, we are yak and uh, we are yak and yeah. okay. So all of them are blend into this powder. Okay, so that's what the that's powder we have here. Yes, three. I think it. they are like power ingredients. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So now, um, what is the process for making this meal together? Well, first we have to put the fire on, mm -hmm. put the fire, put the water and the, the meat inside the water and parboil it. Perhaps just a. Uh, um, papa is more put onions, pepper, mm -hmm. maggi, mm -hmm. and uh, well, hold on for it to boil maybe to a little bit. Down. Okay. Yep. Okay, so that's what we do first. So yeah. we're going to be slicing the pepper and the onions. The pepper, onions and the, um, the leaf. And the leaf. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so then... but I will start with um, 
the water is on fire already. Yes. So I will start with my plantain. Plantain. I'll okay. cut my plantain to this yeah. shape I want. Okay. And it's on ripe plantain we're using for this it's one. On ripe plantain, strictly on ripe plantain. So now, what's your tip for cutting? I know you do think you have skills with this thing for cutting on ripe plantain. This is a this is something I've I've no, it has never you understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's the trick for this is just peeling it. Mm -hmm. on ripe plantain? Yeah. Wow. There's something about the knife that you're doing now. It's a lie. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I totally do not believe Maybe you. This is usually comes. a struggle. Wow. And it's so... Wow. Okay. So cool. It's as simple as simple. everything. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So I need to sorry. practice. Yes. I need to do... Let me try it. Let me prove to you that the knife that you're using. Okay. Or you use your hand. Or there's something you shall do in shall. I shall not making it... I mean, I'm making it easy. So, yeah, I'll just try, Mr. In Shengen, in thanks for taking care of me. Okay. okay, what did I do? This is not hard. Hey, Very easy. Okay. Yeah, peel it off. Then you can support it with your hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's okay. Let's pull this off then. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. You guys should have some faith in me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. So while well, we actually allow Chef C here yeah. uh, to get into making our breakfast this morning, we're going to go on a quick break. Look at that now, guys. I need to go home and frame this. Well, <laughs> stop hating. We are going to a quick break and uh, we're going to start all over from the top because it is the top of the hour. We'll be right back with so much more. Don't go anywhere. All righty then. Now, we did say it was going to be an awesome time on the show today. So far, so good. So amazing. Yes, indeed. Now, you know, you can only get the uh, very best here on Wake Up Nigeria. So, hey, do tune in every single day from yeah. 7 o'clock is when you should be meeting us here, especially here with Titi and Winfrey. And, of course, oh. Mike, somewhere looking in the corners. It's all about great feels, great vibes on a Monday morning. <laughs> Honestly, we're always joined by amazing people on the show. It's an essential part of what we do every mm -hmm. single morning just for you. Exactly. And did you catch that? Winfrey peeled one plantain and the whole of Nigeria will not hear what they came. One so, unripe plantain. It's very obvious that Mazino okay. has never peeled oh, unripe plantain Thank you before. so much. Uh, excuse me. Because Have it you is a struggle. It's the struggle it, You is need real. skill to do that, Mazino. Mm -hmm. Can you look at all of these? <laughs> That's on me. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Chef Amen. C. Yeah. Come and say hi to us. <laughs> so okay. we're here making anti-malaria. Mazino, I heard you have malaria. <laughs> well, I, 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 heard. I don't know about the malaria, but yeah, I'm having that food. But if you live in my household, your plantains will always be peeled by yours truly, because I yeah. wouldn't want you to suffer, you know. Oh, please. Yeah. Come and chop all the onions first, then we'll come and have a uh -huh. uh, But it's going to be great today. It's going to be amazing. We have music <laughs> to top it all off. We have something really fresh and unpredictable for you today. We're going to be doing what we can to go above and beyond to deliver everything we have to you. Yes, indeed. We still have 45 minutes left, or well, maybe even shorter than that, because we've been talking since on the show, and it all begins right now. Thank you very much. Uh, there's plenty to discover here and also inside of the kitchen. Don't go anywhere. Let's first of all let you know we understand that everybody cannot be early risers, and that's why we <laughs> choose to do everything all over again here at the start of the 8 o'clock hour. My name is Mazino Appeal. And I'm Titi Lara so You can, of course, stream the show live on tvcentertainment.tv or on Facebook at TVC Connect. If you're not following us yet, you should be. Our social media handle is, as always, at TVC Connect for Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and there's one more. Instagram. Instagram, yeah, that it. one. Yeah. yeah. You can watch us live, <laughs> channel 27 on GoTV and 49 on UHF. Remember to download the app. We're on Android and iOS. Yeah. Across the world, you can see us, carry us with you anywhere you go. So, when it comes to who wants to be a millionaire, we always give you some highlights of what happened over the weekend. We're going to be doing that very, very soon. That we bring you music from Wilderboy, formerly Olalike Mekulei. I think it's still his name, it's not formally. Now, the musician artist has been building his solo career since 2015, and today we get to hear him perform on Wake Up Nigeria. When we bring in someone to come and talk about their business, we take it very seriously, just like Olumide Bangwilu. He's a real estate developer and founder of Buckstone Properties Limited. His foray into real estate as a realtor kicked off not too long ago 
and we're going to be having a conversation to find out exactly how that's been going. Yay. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Second hour here. Honestly. Had a very interesting conversation this morning, Mike. You weren't in the makeup room, but I, I visited the ladies while they were having their makeup done. Always and do, don't you? Uh, yes, he does. I do <laughs> bring the best of the start of the morning, don't right. I? <laughs> and we're talking about what would you do if you uh, were given 10 years, 20 years back? What would be, hmm. what would what your life you be like, me? Mike? Do? Yeah. If you were given 20 years back, if you were... You woke oh, up when you are 18 again. 18 all over again. Wow. In this day and age? You would know. You would know. How would you know? Mm. I mean, would you be back with all the memories and all of that? Uh, well, yes, no, you'd be back with all the memories. What would you do? All yeah. of it. What would I do? If I was 18 again, I would mm -hmm. go straight into modeling. Oh. Didn't yeah. you do that already? No, I didn't. Start okay. early enough. When did you start? I waited till I was in, high, in university. Wow. Oh. Like 300 level. No, I'm talking about modeling, modeling, like modeling, yeah. modeling, like yeah. look for an internship. You get that, so you didn't get that, so you wouldn't have gotten that support at 18. I, mean, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I mean, <laughs> you didn't, but you would still I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but I know I would have, because I didn't know, I didn't discover that part of me yeah. right till like much later. Yeah. But I could have focused on it. A lot of people said stuff, but I could have focused on it and I like, pursued it. Considering the fact that mm, I, I probably would have invested more. I spent quite a bit of didn't money. Didn't you already? You, you, I did you grew a up little, at 15, did, didn't you? Uh, well, mm. hey, by the time I was 17, I had earned my first my first millionaire. OK, should you but stop? My issue down. now is oh, I didn't invest it. it. <laughs> I didn't invest it. I spent it. That's the truth. Ah, there, there you the go. issue now is Life I is spent short, it. Baby, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I probably would be in a different place right now. Because what it was worth then is not what it's worth now. I feel you. True, I feel true, you. Very true. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I've enjoyed my life. I'll, I'll put it that there. I, I think of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. What, contentment. What, my contentment game is... He's in such a good mood today. It's actually freaking me out. I don't understand what's going on. Welcome once again. Start of the 8 o'clock hour. Let's do the news. It's 89 days to the 2023 elections. We begin with this sad development, however, as hoodlums set on fire INEC office in Inizi, local government area of Eboin State, leaving several permanent voters' cards and other items burned. Now, in a statement released, INEC's National Commission and Chairman Information and Voters Education Committee, Festus Okoye, said the incident occurred around 10 a.m. when some unidentified persons set the entire building ablaze. The statement confirms that no casualties resulted from the attack. But the main building and all the valuables and immovable items inside it were destroyed. Items destroyed include 340 ballot boxes, 130 voting cubicles, 14 electric power generators, large water storage tanks, assorted office furniture and fixtures, and yet to be identified uh, a determined quantity of PVCs. Now, police authorities have arrested two offenders in possession of 468 permanent voters' cards. National Commissioner, Independent National Electoral Commission, Festus Okoye, disclosed this in a statement. Mr. Okoye noted that the first offender, Nasiru Idris, was found with 101 PVCs in Sokoto State, adding that a magistrate court in Sokoto has sentenced the suspect to one year in prison. The other offender, whose identity was not revealed, was arrested by the police in Kano State with 367 PVCs. He has been charged to court and the commissioner is currently pursuing his prosecution. According to the INEC National Commissioner, the offense is in contravention of Section 117 and 145 of the Electoral Act 2022. Mr. Okoye says INEC will continue to pursue all violators of the Electoral Act and ensure their diligent prosecution. And that will be all for the news this second hour, but not all inside of our kitchen where our peel plantains are well being processed and very well on their way into my stomach at the end of today. But let's take it from Winfrey instead. <laughs> Thank you, Mazinu. Uh, okay, so I'm still here with Chef C, and of course, we're making breakfast right here in the wake of Nigeria Kitchen, and uh, we're making anti malaria pepper soup. Yep. Right? And uh, we have plantain here, which has actually literally been um, the most of the conversation that we've been having. So now, I'm loving the way you're chopping um, this plantain. I like the shape. Yeah. What's the skill with that? Mm, I'm trying to, like I told you, mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring uh, continental to 
African mm -hmm. continental yes, wear. Your, yeah, your yeah so people should stand, understand not just eating anyhow, but uh, bring shapes and style into your food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's exactly what that's I'm what doing. you're doing. Nice. So now we haven't spoken about the role this plantain is playing with this pepper soup. This our antibalaya pepper soup. Now tell us. No, without, what's the job description of this plantain? Yeah, <laughs> um, 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 plantain is iron already. Yeah, you know what it gives to the body. So mm -hmm. you can't do. Without, we can't do without pepe, we can't do pepe soup without a plantain. Without plantain, yeah. Okay, so now is this going into the plantain or we're just boiling this on the side? Maybe just uh, have Can't a wash of it. I'm trying to put them together. Okay, so it's not going inside, it's going inside. Oh, it's going inside, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, because I mean, pepe soup is great, but then again, we need something to make it. Yeah, feeling eight. right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So nice, 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 amazing. In case you're just joining us, as I said earlier, we're making anti-malaria pepper soup. And the ingredients we have for that uh, is right here. We have our onion, our cubes, seasoning cubes. We have our pepper, that is a uh, scotch bonnet. We have our scent leaf, that's scent leaf, right? Yes. Yes, we have um, crayfish, we have our dry fish as well. We have our meats, which is actually in the pot right now. Yes. It's boiling with a few um, ingredients there as well. We have our pepper soup spice, which is actually um, what comprises of the anti-malaria quality of properties right here. And uh, it's a combination of cloves. Uh, sorry, what do you call this one? Just say H nice species. Okay, H H nice spices. Spices. Yeah. All right. What's H nice? Yeah, it's just a combination of a, um, ingredients, the ingredients from the local uh, market. Nice. Okay, yeah. so now I'm noticing you're slicing that. Okay, to get the shape. Yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, we have our uh, ingredients right there on the screen all over again. Um, yeah, so the onions, dry fish, crayfish, goat meat, seasoning, scent leaf, fresh pepper, unripe plantain, HNIC makes local spices. Now it's December, we know how the weather gets in December. Sometimes we get uh, some sniffles and because of the dry weather, our throat is dry as well. So this is definitely a great dish to have um, and make with, um, for your family members and all of that. So I noticed that you're using this, yes, and I was gonna ask what this was for. The sticks. Yeah, maybe just wash it maybe after the whole thing. Okay, you understand. that's a that's little that. surprise for us. Yep. All right, let's see what uh, Chef C uh, will be up to with all of that setup. Definitely looking forward to this one. Now we have so much more coming um, to you right here on Wake Up Nigeria, so make sure you do not touch that down. We're going on a quick break and we'll be back. And you are welcome. This is the SME segment. Every Monday here, we try to, well, put you guys in the right frame of mind to starting your own thing. Even if you're working in a bank and you want to just eject, well, this is the place to actually get that passion. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Olumide Bangbelu. He's a real estate developer and the founder of Bookstone Properties Limited. Now, his foray into real estate only just started not too long ago, so we're going to be talking about that, how he started this venture, and how he provides solutions to all the current housing deficit in the country. He joins us right now. Mr. Bangbelu, you are welcome. I hope Thank I you. got that right. Did yeah. I ring the right bells? Yes, you did. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Now, real estate is something that huh, many people have tried. I've been burnt. I've tried a couple of times. I've been burned a step back. But then again, I also know the value of actually owning your own property. You've been in the business for how long now? Um, for three years. Three years? Yeah. Oh, and you started your own thing. Yes. Three years is such a short time to actually learn the ropes and then jump into starting your own thing with all the risks out there in a country like Nigeria. I mean, how come? Um, well, uh, what I would say is that um, I'm a person that I love to learn. Mm -hmm. Whatever, wherever you put me, I learn very, very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not like I started immediately. I'd been doing a lot of research. I've been okay. um, understanding the industry before I now decided, okay, you know what, this is something I want to do. Mm -hmm. This is a place I want to prefer solutions. to. So I've, I've, I've been able to listen to people's complaints. I've spoken to people that have been burnt. I've spoken to people that have been, should I say, um, that have done really well in the mm -hmm. real estate industry, people that have, uh, should I, uh, let me use the word, favored mm -hmm. in, in the real, real estate industry. So I've juggled everything together and I've seen where I can come in as a solution provider in this space, and that's what we are doing currently at the... What makes your solution any different from the regular guy who's a, real estate, who's a realtor? Okay, so uh, just like you said, the industry is 
huge. The industry is large. Many people have been burnt. Many people have been duped. Let me use that word. But my, my, I come from a very, very, very um, um, diligent uh, and, and diligent background. Let me use that word. And I try as much as possible to do everything by the books. Mm -hmm. I jokingly tell people, anywhere you will see trouble, you wouldn't find me because mm -hmm. I don't have the strength for mm -hmm. it. So before I before my company brings any property into the market, which we call products, before we bring any property into the market, we've done our due diligence. Mm -hmm. it, we make sure it has good titles. We make sure it's secured. One of the problems most real estate investors or most homeowners have in Lagos, or let me say in the real estate space in Nigeria, mm -hmm. maybe Africa, one of them is the Omonile issue. Yeah. We try as much as possible in Boxton properties to eradicate that problem, meaning if you get a property from us, you are sure to, sure to go back to bed and sleep. Nobody's coming to your land to say, oh, uh, we want to collect this one, we want to collect that one, or mm -hmm. there's trouble mm -hmm. here and there. No, you don't have So a as an agent or as a realtor, how do you make sure that these aren't issues that people or potential clients would not have to deal with? Um, how do you make sure that you've gone about all the books and the documentation and all because it must be a very tedious process. How do you track all of these things to make sure that what you're presenting to the eventual um, um, owner is void of any wahala, katakata, skata, very, skata, very um, So uh, there's this um, popular saying I say to people, when God said he was going to create the world, he said, let us create man. So he was, there, there, is, a, there is a role of um, a team. I have a strong team. It's something I had invested into Mm -hmm. earlier and I realized that if I'm really going to go far in this journey because I tell people I'm not in the I'm not in the real estate industry for five years ten years I know when I want to retire from mm -hmm. the real estate industry and somebody capable will take over from me mm -hmm. so I'm here for the long term so I've invested so much in acquiring or gathering the right team mm -hmm. and we do proper due diligence when it also comes to development we have a strong um, technical partner, PB Designs, they are very good. Mm -hmm. So we try as much as possible not to leave any, any, um, anything to chance. Okay, yeah. so now that that's all down as groundwork, for a person who's out there who's looking to join in the industry, you started in three years, and in one year you have your own thing, your own team, and you're doing such good work. How would you advise this young man, let's say myself, for instance, to get started in the business? Um... Well, what I can say to anybody watching me who wants to get into the real estate industry is don't get carried away by this, oh, there's money there. If you are going in to just say you want to quickly make money and dash out, you will be flogged. So you haven't made money is what you're saying? Uh, I wouldn't say I've not made money. Because your cheeks are <laughs> saying different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wouldn't say I've not made money. I'm grateful to God for how far I've come. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I am, if my intentions were to oh go in blow and become the next big thing in Nigeria, I'll probably maybe be in jail right now Perhaps. because it's a very, 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 very interesting space. You can't joke with people's money. Mm -hmm. You can't. Some people are taking their entire life savings, and handing it over to you, handing it over to you, and then you want to joke with it. No, I have. I, let me use, I have so much to lose. My name is so important. Yeah. My family's name is so important. Mm -hmm. There are people who trust me and believe that I can do this thing and then they've given me backing. Let me use so that word. You've invested word. in your name and you can't ruin it. I, not can't, at this time. I can't because everybody's out there to. watching. You, you need to know that that's one thing. You have to invest in your, um, what do you call it now, um, your identity. Because that's what you're going to use to open the next door and on from there on. What was the first property you sold? Was it uh, whose? How do I get to start selling these properties? Who do I mean to say, oh, God, give me your land. Let me go and sell for you. Okay. How do I get that trust? Okay. So in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. Well, it, was quite in, in the be <laughs> <laughs> it was quite interesting because, um, sorry, mm -hmm. I've always, like I said, I've always um, loved the, the space. Mm -hmm. I think maybe coupled with the fact that my, my dad my dad is an engineer. Okay. So I've I've loved though I didn't study engineering yeah. in school, but I've loved to do something like that. And I remember um there was uh, I have a senior Egbon, let me use that okay. word. He owns a um a thriving real estate business okay. in Nigeria. Okay. And I remember talking to him and I was like, you know what, I think it's time that I would want to start my own thing. Mm -hmm. And of course with his help. With his help and the money we've been able to raise and gather, mm -hmm. we were able to secure our own property. Nice. And um, that's why I would, I, would I would also say we took 
very, 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 very important and we, um, important steps and made sure that the property that's the first property we initially mm -hmm. launched when we started this company is is clear from any omonile issue, title wahala, because like I said, anywhere there's wahala, you will not see mm -hmm. me. And wow. this industry is, some, is, is an industry where you need to be very, very careful. Wow, that is very interesting. So, would I need an investor, like you had somebody to get you started, would I need an investor or can I just plainly start from what? Uh, the, 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 in, in, your, in your experience, advice. Uh, what, what I would say is that real estate is it's a capital intensive um, space. You need capital. Mm -hmm. You need huge amount of capital, yeah. right? So it depends if you have, if you're a trust fund baby, mm -hmm. you can start from mm -hmm. your trust fund. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have trust fund, mm -hmm. you can like, you can know how to sell to investors. First, okay. you need to understand the market. You need to understand because uh, uh, investors are more concerned with ROI. What's okay. it going to give them? Yeah. If they are going to invest two naira, how much are they going to get on their two naira? How long is it going to take them for them to get their, um, their return on investment? So those are all the things you need to package mm -hmm. to be able to now sell to investors and maybe hopefully they yeah. buy into your vision. You also have to prospect for land. So how do you go about finding the best kind of uh, um, well, land to sell? And how much would it cost your clients? Um, okay, so the, to answer the question about finding the, the, the lands we sell, um, that journey or that process is usually very, very, very tedious. Mm. Now, most people would not want to go through that tedious aspect because, like I said, they just want to go in, go yeah. out, cash out, take their money, but mm -hmm. it's usually very tedious. You need to find the land, you need to vet the land, you need to go to the um, 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 Lagos State um, uh, at, uh, Surveyor, mm -hmm. the office of the Surveyor General of Lagos State to make sure... all the details sure, about it. Yeah, to know... Who owns the land? Mm -hmm. Who is the owner of this land? Then, of course, there are some lands that you get from some certain families. You need to also vet mm -hmm. and know which family owns this land. Who are the people in charge of this land? Mm -hmm. Before you now say, oh, you want to acquire to now start developing and then selling. Oh, wow. Because if you don't do the, uh, if you don't do the right, if you don't do your due diligence, mm -hmm. you get burnt. Wow. There's no how you get bond. Yeah, wow, that's a, that's a lot. So most of your lands are, what part of Lagos are they? Um, our properties right now are situated in Ekpe. Oh, okay. And, um, that's, a cheap, that's a considerably cheap place to get property, isn't it? Yes. Funny, Ekpe is one of the cheapest places to get properties in Lagos. We're looking at how much now? Uh, between two, three, four. You can still get... Two, three, four, what's now? Million. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a hundred. Okay, so we, we currently, we, we have two estates in Epe. Mm -hmm. We have one, we call the Grandeur Parks and Garden. That one, total package is so, so generally between two, between two, two to million, four million, million yeah. I would be able to acquire property. And what about building? Do you assist people? Yes, we do. We do development also. And um, by the special grace of God, we, like I mentioned earlier, with our technical partner, PB Designs, we are starting a construction project next year, first quarter. It's okay. actually residential houses. Um, and we are calling... But I want to live in Epe, however and then come to work. I don't know, Titi, what do you think? Should I, should I move to Ekwe and come to work every day from there? I mean, Winfrey, Winfrey, Winfrey should know. I, I don't know, Why perhaps. Know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so um, Ekwe, is, Ekwe is a good place to invest. Mm. Um, I tell people, because I'm very honest with people, mm. you can't, take for example, you, you can't live in Ekwe and come to Lagos mm. um, and come to this side of town. Mm -hmm. It's not that conducive. But of course, the, the thing with real estate is that one, you need to know where people are going. Mm. Where are people going? What's the projection like? And then go and buy land there before they get there. By the time they get there, the return on investment on that land has gone up. Mm -hmm. And then if you decide to build, you are fine. If you decide to sell, you are good. It makes you an investor. Okay. Right? But uh, of course, our uh, development project would not mm. be in that side of Ekwe. Yeah. Well, okay. Fantastic. Well, hey, it's been great having you over. Thank I you mean, I can't say I enough because that's plenty of insight for anybody out there who's willing or who's looking to go into this business. But I'm going to take you over to our kitchen. But I have one question while I'm taking you over there um, to uh, answer. Um, so if I was an individual and I wanted to, well, say, sell a property I acquired somewhere, how possible is that for you to assist me as that individual? Um, okay. So if you want to sell a property, if you want to sell a property uh, as an individual, as an individual, and you want our company to help you sell it, we, I, 
we are not just on, oh, oh, so we know this person or I know mm -hmm. this person and then I want to sell the property for the person. We need to do due diligence on your property mm -hmm. because... Okay, sure. Yeah, because, go on, go on, go on. Okay. Because some people, um, sorry to say, some people have actually bought properties they don't know they bought breeze. Oh, wow, yeah. So Tell I need me to be sure that. that I'm not selling breeze. Yeah. And you are not bringing breeze to me <laughs> to sell. I feel you. So, I understand. Uh, that is funny indeed. Welcome inside the kitchen. Yay, TV magic. We brought him in here. Mm -hmm. Ta-da. <laughs> so, Winfried. Yes. Over to you. Welcome. Good morning. Yeah. Well. And uh, so, Chef C and I have been here slaving away all morning. <laughs> for this meal together. So, it is anti-malaria pepper soup. Yes, sir. So. Also served with uh, goose meat and plantain. Yeah. So, we'd like you to, to try it and tell us exactly what you think about it. Hold on, hold on. We're good. Are you on. Let, them, let them see how beautiful it is. <laughs> okay, you like you've seen it now? Yes, okay. I do. All right. And pepper soup, rice. All right. So. Yeah, and it's perfect for the weather. You know, yes, December is. is coming. So and there's uh, fish, goat meat, uh, well plantain. Yes. Okay. Right. So, so where do you um, want to start? Yes, yes. go ahead. Have a taste. All right. Mm. So what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> it's like you're thinking about it. <laughs> I think this is, this what? is really good. <laughs> all right. Really good. Spot you. on. That's all we definitely it's need. It's spicy yeah. and um, of course it works it's for It's anti-malaria. Right. Oh. All right. <laughs> all right, please have a drink. Okay. Please. All right, because it is, it is pepper early in the morning and yeah. I know that feeling, but Chef C Chef always C's done, done it again. has our back in the kitchen. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned yeah. in very early for a Monday morning to mm. join us. Hopefully, we've gotten your day started right. Yes. We'll keep it going all through the week. Well. So we'll catch everybody again tomorrow, won't we? Tomorrow. 7 a.m., y'all. Making a date with us tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.